For more on China's economy, CGTN's Rochelle Kufo spoke to Sarah Xu. She's a visiting scholar from Fudan University. Rochelle began by asking her about consumption trends in China. Consumption has really started to pick up again in the fourth quarter. Um, it was really when COVID hit that it plummeted because people simply couldn't leave their homes. Um, it's picking up as people have uh, gotten out of their homes, uh, but there's still some uncertainty there because uh, there have been pockets of COVID outbreaks. So a little bit of jitteriness um, in that regard, but overall it seems to have recovered, um, which is a really um, wonderful thing, especially as other countries have experienced issues. Um, there are also some issues uh, with regard to people going out to restaurants and um, getting other services. Um, and so it's not just consumption of retail products, but also of uh, services um, that you know, we'd still like to see go up a bit. And you mentioned some of these outbreaks. We did see, obviously, uh, a cluster outbreak in, in Hebei province. How do you see that affecting the outlook going forward? Well, it seems that uh, China has it relatively under control. Um, China certainly has a lot more government control over um, its economy and its social um, fabric, so that when there is an outbreak, uh, China can simply shut down, which other countries have really struggled to do. Um, and so because of that, I don't think it'll have a really huge toll on the economy. I think that there's a lot more consumer confidence as a result of that. Um, and so it may have some sort of short-term effects, but uh, I don't think it'll have um, as many effects as it has had in the West. So I want to take a look at businesses now. What does industrial production fixed asset investment tell us about the confidence that businesses have and how that might translate into the broader Chinese economy? Yeah, it looks like um, there's been a good, um, a steady amount of fixed asset investment in the fourth quarter and in 2020 overall. Um, it seems to be doing well. Um, and it is on the rise year on year. Uh, the only thing that may be a little bit concerning is that um, a lot of the growth in fixed asset investment was due to real estate construction. Um, and so, you know, we'd like to see that go down a bit um, and have more uh, manufacturing investment. Uh, but all in all, it looks fine. Um, in terms of production, there's been a lot of produ production, both for um, domestic purposes as well as for export. Um, and so I don't really see any worries there. Certainly after the COVID pandemic hit, um, it seemed to pick up uh, really, and now it's right in step um, once again. And one of the areas that we did see take a hit was in the unemployment space. Obviously, a lot of uncertainty there as, as factories were forced to close down initially or, or sort of downsize. What are we seeing in terms of government support for really boosting employment and resources there? There's been a lot of government support, um, especially in terms of uh, manufacturing. Um, we've seen some more support for things like uh, the gig economy, um, vocational training. There's been additional uh, job creation, um, a lot of um, you know, upticks in terms of platform-based employment and helping graduate students to find jobs and things like that. It's still concerning, but it is on track and the unemployment rate has, has gone um, down quite a bit. And so that's really a good thing. So which other parts of the economy do you think could really do with more support and what would that support really look like? Yeah, I think that, you know, there are still small businesses that are struggling. Um, the growth is also uneven, especially in rural areas. Um, we have seen a big amount of growth in terms of online uh, services and production, which we would expect due to the pandemic. Um, but there are still a lot of small businesses, especially services like restaurants, that we're hoping to see an uptick in um, service consumption um, as a result of the spring festival. So that's something that analysts are really watching uh, for the end of this month in February. Now, we did see that China's ability to contain COVID really helped it be the only major economy to see growth in 2020. How do you see that impacting perhaps other countries that they trade with? Do we expect to see some sort of domino effect? Yeah, I mean, it, it is really positive in terms of um, knock-on effects for other countries. Certainly the countries that supply inputs to China, many of the Asian countries have benefited from this um, uptick in exports and production to other countries, um, as other countries have really relied on China to supply things like PPE and um, all of those sorts of, you know, just even regular types of imports. Um, and so, and especially electronics and so on. Um, and so I think, you know, this is going to be something that will help to provide positive growth um, in the near future, which is a bright spot in the global economy.